Hey guys, it's Wilson, and on the camera is Smelser, and we're here at Mount Lake Terrace High School to show you guys how to safely use the tools here as well as pass the safety test. For this video, we're going to be taking a look at the compound miter saw. Uh, this is one of our advanced tools, so if you want to learn how to use this, watch the video and talk to one of us for um, getting the test. As always, my first step is to make sure that I'm safe. Sleeves are up. Anything that could possibly get caught in the tool, like my uh, hoodie tassels, your ID, long hair, all of that needs to be tucked away and out away from the blade. Headphones too. Headphones too, with or without cords. Because although these tools are loud, you can hear little things that are going to help let you know whether or not the tool is operating properly. Uh, Brian, why don't you come over on this side of me here. So the way this tool operates is a spinning blade that drives the material down while it gets cut and against this table as it gets cut. So when we set up the wood, it's important that this material is against this table and against these back tables as well. Now that's really hard to do with this heavy 4x4, so uh, anytime you do something long, we've got a couple of supports that you can put under the material. Chop saw, support block, do not drill. Meh. If you have something really long, we have a rack here, a roller, and that can be put clear across the shop. Um, when I use this tool, I abide by something called the rule of three. There are one, two, three, four different tables your material needs to be touching three of them for it to be a safe cut. So right now, I'm actually touching four. One, two, three, four. It's against that back. We're in good shape. Let's take a look at a cut. Of course, I'm gonna have my safety glasses on me. Before I use this tool, I like to make sure this guard is operating properly. It will automatically move itself out of the way. So that's a nice feature I wanna make sure is working. And, yeah, let's take a look. So three steps to the cut. First, I'm going to turn the tool on and make sure it's up to full speed. Second stage is I'm going to complete the cut slowly enough that the machine doesn't slow down. And the third step is I'm going to let the blade come to a complete stop before I pull it up. Start, cut, stop. Let's take a look. Once it's come to a complete stop, I'll bring it up. That way it doesn't catch on the wood. Sometimes it can kick this scrap away. You want to be careful with that. The blade takes some time to stop. Don't use a piece of wood to slow it down. That's on the test. All right, let's take a look at some other features on this tool. This is a compound miter saw. And you'll notice I've called it a chop saw once before. Chop saw and miter saw are interchangeable names. The reason it's compound well, the reason it's a miter saw is I have the ability to change its angle. And there's two steps to that. One is loosen this. And Brian, can you get a bit of a side view here? There's a lever. Now, the lever allows me to index to some common angles that you use in construction. I can go as far as 45. The knob locks it in place, and I can lock it at strange angles if I'm doing something in STEM English 12 and I need a specific angle. If I'm going to cut it 45 degrees again, I have one, two, three points of contact. I'm still good with this cut. Um, I should mention, just as the manufacturer does, keep your hands out of this area. Keep them as far away from the blade as you can. I'm going to hold this in place so it doesn't move around on me. The blade has a vector sideways here. Now that I've given an angle, it can pull the wood this way a little bit. So until that blade seats into the wood, I might need to resist a little bit of creep. Let's take a look here.
You hear that loud noise as I came up? You saw this start to move? I lifted the blade before it fully stopped. That's not a safe practice. That was a mistake on my part. Stopped myself, let it slow down. Now the reason this is a compound miter saw is if I need to create an even more complicated angle, I can loosen this and then the whole saw can slide to the side and now I'm going to cut the saw. There's one more knob here and I can pull that out of the way. As with all of these tools, if you guys need to do something complex on it you've never done before, please come and talk to the instructors first and we'll help you get set up. Let's take a look at how this cut is going to go. Now, I'm noticing that my guard is not getting out of the way for this cut. So I'm going to have to get my finger on this guard and open it. Wow, that's really tight. There we go. So I'm going to actually hold this open, which is going to increase the risk of using the tool. So this is one of those situations you want to get an instructor by you, just to make sure you don't make any bad decisions. This is why it's nice to not have headphones on. This is why it's nice to be paying close attention. There is something blocking this tool from completing the cut. I found the problem. I shut the tool off, and now I'm going to inspect how to fix it. Turns out I need to move this guide a little bit further back still. Make sure I'm still aligned. And I can complete my cut. See how that kicked away? That's why you let the blade stop before you pull it away. Otherwise, I might have kicked that out of the machine. All right, make sure I covered all my steps here. Blade guard is very necessary, obviously. Long material should be supported. Occasionally, you'll have a piece of wood that's warped or twisted and it doesn't sit right on here. Because it's twisted, it doesn't lock in to the 90 degree fences. That is not a safe piece of wood to cut. Come get an instructor and we can help you with that special situation. But if it's warped or twisted or otherwise you can't get it in a nice stable position like this, it's not safe, you need to talk to an instructor. But, try creating that shape on a bandsaw. If you guys are interested in getting certified and using this tool, study this video, come talk to one of your instructors about getting a safety test for it, and um, keep watching these videos for more information and more tools to get certified in. Mr. Wilson, what can we yes. do to help keep this tool clean? Ah, at the end of every cut, pick up all scrap wood, throw it away, remove the piece you're working on. Please return the tool to its original angles. Get yourself a brush. What are you finding? Nothing. Ah. Get yourself a brush from over here. Remove dust from the work area and sweep the floor around. Are there ways that we can reduce that amount of dust? Yes. So this tool and many of the other ones in the shop have a dust collection system connected to it. If you have a tool that has a hose connected to it, you can come over here and press the green button. If you're the last one to leave the shop at the end of the day, please make sure the red button has been hit. You will hear a loud noise. That is totally normal.
and you're good to go.